Well, today is a new day. Um, I do want to point out that there appears to be water in the oil for the cam in there. I find that interesting. These back two chambers, for be lack of a better word, have it. The other two are pretty much clean as far as I can see. That is interesting. But I also found another stamped mark in the casting. There's a zero up there, and I don't know why. If anyone knows what all these stampings are for, uh, please let me know in the comments. So the next thing on the docket is going to be stripping the head. I'm going to go ahead and leave the rockers in place. I have pulled out all the head bolts so the head is loose. But I'm going to leave the rockers in place and use the rocker shaft and a pry bar, which I seem to have... There it is. Uh, use that to compress the valve springs uh, to pop the collets out and pull the valves. They are pretty well carboned up. Um, we'll see if I need new uh, valves as well. I'm not sure. So I wanted to show you how I'm pulling these valves out. This might be interesting because it's like a three-hand job here. I don't have any spring compressors or anything like that right now. Basically what I do is I take a socket and I put it on the concrete where the head's going to go. Now I do have those extension cords and the end of that is sticking down. So this thing will never be sitting ceiling surface on the concrete. And I've also got this cardboard down to protect it when I do have it down. Basically I just roll it over and I keep an eye out for how it's coming down. Like here, need to over snit. Actually, I need to move the head. There we go. Comes down right on top of the valve. Then I take my hammer. I check that it's solid. Just tap it. You can hear the difference when it's on the spring. Put a socket on there, and normally I hold the socket and then give it a good whack. You can hear when it goes. There we go. Uh, collet's broken loose. Then this is how I get the collets out. I basically take this pry bar, start prying it down. After it gets to a certain point, I take my other hand, use a screwdriver in here like this. Um, uh, yeah, it's hard to do and film at the same time. And then I just take this magnet I got here and suck up the collets with the magnet. I don't think I'll be able to get that on video, so I'm just going to go down the line and uh, pull them. All right, after I've got the collets out, just take the springs and the cap off. These are doubled springs. I think I'm going to reuse them. I'm probably go I might test them, just see how much compre how much force it takes to compress them completely. If they're all the same, I'll just reuse them. One less thing I need to buy. This head was running great, and they're easy enough to change if I ever need to. Beyond that, there's the valve in there, and then there's a little ring that's oil seal, I think. Not sure what that's doing up here. Maybe it's a like a smearing device. There was one on the uh, exhaust valve, too. Let me try and find a way to hold this. going to push that valve out, grab the uh, ring while I'm doing that. There's that little ring I was mentioning. Not exactly sure what it does, but it's hardened. They're, the one cracked on me. There we go. Pulling the valve out. I also like to see how much wiggles in the valve. There's like nothing there. That valve seems to be sealing all right. I don't know, the exhaust valve, there's like, I mean, it looks shiny, but it's actually black. If, if I get rid of the glare, that's not actually metal, that's like, black on there which is interesting i'm not sure how that was sealing but she had did, did have low but even compression across all the cylinders i mean this actually looks reusable probably gonna reuse the valves 
if they can, uh, if the seats aren't uh, too worn on these, I'll just reuse all the valves. Alright, that's uh, cylinder number four taken apart. Gonna go down the line, bag and tag. I also wanted to show you this. If I can get to focus. Inside there, there also seems to be a a groove for another seal. You can see it in the exhaust better than the intake. Actually, it might just be in the top of the intake. I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll find out. More research. Well, now I've got all the valves out. I just took out the ones out of one. And you know what's really surprising to me? That doesn't appear to be any bronze valve guides in there. I could have swore that these had, were supposed to have valve guides in there. But it looks like they're just bored in the casting. That's interesting. I guess I'll have to do a little bit more research on that. I don't know if this black gunk is from the lead replacement additive to keep the seats from eroding, which makes sense. Um, that's just something I thought of that could be why that is that way. There's a fair bit of carbon all over the place up here. Not a whole, whole lot. Well, actually that certainly looks like a quite the small pile there. But yeah, that'll all get cleaned up. Guess the next thing to do would be a rocker shaft. Strip that off and then this head will be uh, completely stripped. Something else interesting I just noticed, because this is an early head, these supports do not pinch the, uh, uh, what is it, the rocker shaft like the later ones do. See here, normally on the other ones, they're all sliced there and then as you compress these studs, they torque down and pinch the rocker shaft. On this one instead, it appears that these are pinch bolts up here. I mean, I might take one out if I know what size and spanner it. Let's try 11, nope, 13. Well, 13 fits on it, loosely, but fits. Uh, I don't know. But... I'm going to just try taking this off and hoping it don't go spraying on me. Just take whiz those all off and then uh, hopefully it comes off as a unit. Now this is actually something recommended in the manual to use the rocker cover to hold it all together. They did go spraying on me but not terribly. I mean I have managed to wrangle it all back together. But, you know, just use the nuts. It recommends using it upside down, but for storage purposes, I put it on right side up. That way, uh, well, basically uh, tucks it in tighter, and so I can store it a little easier But until I get to taking it apart, rebuilding, replacing, whatever I need to do there. Something interesting I just discovered is I thought this was the factory head gasket. I didn't think this had ever been apart before, but... You can see all those oval-shaped coolant passages. Those are all broken out. Those aren't supposed to be all that open to begin with. I mean, I even made a video on it. This is the blown head gasket from the Series 3 motor. It's the same style, copper and whatnot. Um, and that's interesting. Uh, but you can see how they're all kind of restricted a bit. The rear ones are restricted more, of course, to, or the front ones are restricted more, excuse me, to uh, force the coolant around to the back. On this one, instead, they've actually been torn out, which is really interesting. Made in England, petrol. This one even says Rover. Cooper's gasket. The other one that I've got, the Series 3 one, let's see, markings are on this side. Petrol, made in England. No rover, no cop, no nothing. Interesting. Alright, got the block upside down now. 
pulling out the crank. It's starting to get dark again, but uh, you can see some of the paint markings on the crank. Oh, that's interesting. There's, I never saw those stampings before there. There's like an H. Interesting. But yeah, that's the old crank. I'm probably not going to reuse this one. Hopefully I won't because bearings for this, the Conrod bearings, or our crank pins, are really small and really expensive because they don't make them new again. They've only got new old stock left. I'm going to pull the main bearings out and I'll bring you back to have a look at what they look like. Well, I've got the first two main bearing caps out. The last one is a real pain because of the T-seals in there. I'll show you that when I get to it. But, as you can see, these are pretty well worn out. Uh, they're down to the copper. So, not doing my crank any favors, but, yeah, it's, I'm not using this crank again, hopefully. So, not too bad. Not worried about it. Well, here's the rear main bearing block. You can see the seal retainer. Or, I don't even know, this might actually be the seal. I'm not exactly sure. I thought it was the seal retainer. But, uh, you can see, those are the bloody T-seals that are annoying to put in stall. I heard the, the devil's work. I'll be making a special tool to put those in. Uh, there, you can see that a little better. And you can see the other half and then that ring there. I guess that's an extra point of difficulty for the oil to cross I'm not sure but now the crank should just lift right out now that I got that bearing out oh, I did show you yep also down to the copper that one's hosed so uh, just a matter matter of lifting her out I guess all right I've got the thrust washers out these go on either side of the center main bearing and this is all that there is, one on each side, and it only goes half the circumference of the crank. Uh, one of these you can see is, well, pretty well worn out, also down to the brass, and the other one's good. It's interesting if you look at the back of them, the good one, which was in the back, has been replaced. This is a plus two and a half thousandths, and the other one might be original. So apparently someone has been in here before, and that's why the head gasket would have been replaced, because you got to pull the pistons out to... Well, actually you could drop the crank without pulling the pistons, but... Not sure. Pistons were still standard. Um, that's interesting. Not sure about these bearing halves. Uh, looks like they came out with the crank. Let's have a look-see at the main bearings. Nope, look like standard bearings. Alright, well, good to know. You can also see the inside of my block. I did clean this, get some of the grot out, um, basically using a bit of petrol and a soft brush from the dollar store. Just had the sump off, squirt a bit of petrol, and then uh, scrub it with the brush lightly. And, uh, Worked out just fine. Apparently I can see my breath now. That's interesting. Alright, well, I think this is the block about stripped. I've got to pull this stud out. Um, and I've also got to pull the uh, tappet guides out. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. I, I probably need to make up a special tool for that. But I'll bring you back when there's something up to update you with. Well, I was trying to pull the guides out, but uh, my method wasn't working. I have this piece of all thread here. Originally, I had it bent at the top and was trying to hammer it out almost like a slide hammer. Unfortunately, that just wasn't good enough, and I don't have a real slide hammer. Sit light. If I could get the light to stay put. Anyways, so what I did was I got this nut on the bottom, and I wedged it in there with a spud bar. It was working fine. I was jacking it up off the bottom. Well, that worked so long. Got it up that high. And then, well, as you can see, she done buckled on me and it's got foobar. So what I'm doing is I'm knocking out the cam bearings right now. What you do for that is you go in through the oil, uh, the oil drill holes and you punch down with a pin punch. 
and what happens is it folds the bearing up and that's when you basically collapse it and pull it out with a bar let me show you uh, well that hole's pretty gunked up not sure how you get the end one out but let me clean this out and I'll bring you back all right what I'm gonna do just you know tappy tap tap all right and there she goes you can hear the tone change and then basically just uh, push out the bearings supposed to be able to do this like with a piece of wire pull it out there we go there's a cam bearing fold it up and pushed out all right got to do that for the rest of them and you know squared a bit pretzel bad 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 but